Sub team walks in the video. You know what this feels like. This feels a lot like. Hmm? Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode one of Equals and Alternatives. We're going to talk about today the 20 best foods for fat loss, which is a dumb title. I agree. It's dumb that the thumbnail is what it is. Or actually, thumbnail, thumbnail. <laughs> Yo, leave me a comment if you only clicked this video because you saw the thumbnail. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Lean bulk. Mike, how tall are you? I am 5'11". <laughs> it's dumb titled because there aren't fat loss foods. There aren't muscle gain foods. There are foods that can help you be in a calorie deficit to lose body fat. There are foods that can help you be in a calorie surplus to build muscle. Today we're going to talk about some of the foods that work well for fat loss. Either one, because they keep you full longer. Two, because their macro profile is nice, high protein, lowish calorie. Uh, because getting adequate protein while being in a deficit can be a challenge. Um, some of these foods help with convenience. So if you're on the go, if you don't have a lot of time to cook, let's, let's get started. First, egg whites. I like egg whites because they're straight protein. They're easy to make. Hot sauce, a little bit of ketchup. They're delicious. Can you eat the yolk? You can absolutely eat the yolk. For those of you who don't know though, Egg whites are straight protein. Whole eggs, so the yolk plus the white, is primarily fat. About a third of the calories come from protein, two thirds come from dietary fat, and a whole egg. Am I too far away? I have whole eggs on here as well. Organic Valley is the, the company here. Organic, cage-free eggs. Chickens get to run around and, and live. Um, by the way, I haven't fully fleshed this out, so I probably shouldn't say it, but I'm gonna share it anyway. I'm not gonna share it. Number three, Brussels sprouts. These are on here for no other reason than I like them. They're actually relatively high protein per calorie. They're also high fiber per calorie. Uh, my trick here is I boil them and then strain it out and then I season them and then I oven roast them. A little bit of olive oil. Halo Top, this is a low calorie, high protein ice cream. I picked pistachio flavor, which isn't the best flavor, but it is the best texture. Pistachio flavor Halo Top is basically ice cream texture. Um, it's sweetened with erythritol, which I like. Can cause some bloating. There's a decent amount of sugar alcohols in here, right? So it's fiber, sugar alcohols, but if you don't have a ton of calories to play with, if you can't make ice cream or froyo fit in your macros for cutting, this is a solid alternative. <laughs> you're gonna be like, this is not a top 20 fat loss food, and you're right, it's not. I kinda just got it because I want, I want Smirking. I like frozen yogurt because it is low fat, high carb, which works well on training days. Um, there's a weird trend moving towards macros don't really matter, which is just wrong. <laughs> like if you take someone with poor insulin sensitivity and you run them on a high carb diet versus a low carb diet, keeping protein the same and keeping calories the same, they're gonna see far better results on a low carb diet. If you take a lean-ish dude and have them on a high volume strength training program and go high carb versus low carb, they're gonna see way better results on the higher carb program, all else equal. Anyway, I got greens on here just because you're supposed to eat greens. It's like, it's a good thing to do. You don't really have to if you don't want to though. Greek yogurt is an interesting one. This is some fancy Greek yogurt in a glass. Macros are 14 protein, 14 carb, two and a half fat. No sweetener in here, which there's no good evidence to show that sucralose leads to any of the negative health consequences that many people think it does. People who are very anti-diet soda, it's gonna give you cancer. There's no good evidence for that. That being said, I drastically limit my intake of artificial sweeteners, not stevia, not erythrol, just because we don't know. That's the bottom line. It's like, we don't have 50 years of consistent intake of data on these things. We don't actually know what the long run consequences are. So if I can be in a deficit on a very low artificial sweetener intake versus being in a deficit on a high artificial sweetener intake, I'd rather be 
on a low artificial sweetener intake. Playing it safe. Anyway, I only mention that because some Greek yogurts that have like ridiculous macros, high protein, low fat, low carb, only taste good because they're sweetened with sucralose. And that's one area where I, I don't indulge. Cashew milk is something I stumbled across by chance. I'm fine with cow milk. If you don't have any sensitivities digestively, and if that's you, then maybe it's best to eliminate it for a while and see if, um, see if that helps. But the only reason I use cashew milk is in my smoothies, link down below to my daily smoothie, it's delicious. 25 calories in eight ounces, and uh, I have found that the texture when using this is better than any other kind of milk. Tuna packets. These things, these are expensive because we're in New York City, but usually at a, at a Walmart in the middle of America, these are a dollar a piece. 16 protein, four carb, half a gram of fat. 18 protein, one carb, half a gram of fat. Like macros are insane. They transport, you don't have to keep them cold. So for road trips, you can buy 30 of these and uh, the, the price per gram of protein is very reasonable. You just tear it open, you know, use a plastic fork or just go in there with your face. Tuna packets. Oatmeal, oatmeal is just a classic. It's got some fiber, tastes good, straight carbs for the most part. Beef jerky is a very convenient protein source. It's a little more socially acceptable than the tuna if you're the type of person who doesn't want to, in the middle of an airplane, like stink up your row and have people looking at you. I would be, I would be pumped to do that, but I know other people are more respectful and better human beings than me. Um, I'm gonna come in close. This is another one, guys. I talk a lot about not marrying my opinions and being okay with um, going against previous positions I held. I've cut way back on beef jerky. I've just cut way back on processed meats in general. I don't wanna get cancer. Is having beef jerky from time to time gonna give us cancer? Probably not. Pick your battles, pick your vices, pick your indulgences, and this isn't one for me. That being said, macros are ridiculous. 13 protein, four carb, one and a half fat. It is expensive, that's one of the downsides. Banana, classic, potassium, tasty carbs. Quest bar, no protein bar has amazing, amazing macros. So Quest bars are tasty enough, uh, enough protein, high fiber, I roll with them. The thing you wanna be careful with with protein bars is if they're high in sugar alcohols, might give you gas, might give you below discomfort, and that's no fun. So being on the go. If you're traveling, if you're flying, if you're out of the house for five, six hours and you're gonna want a snack and you're not gonna have a place where you can stop and get one, bang, protein bar. Berries. Blackberries, raspberries, strawberries, blueberries, I like them all. Strawberries are the best from a calorie to volume perspective. I don't love them, I didn't buy them. I bought some blackberries and some raspberries because they go very well in smoothies. I like them in oatmeal, high fiber, high micronutrients, you're the micros, relatively satiating, meaning there aren't that many calories, there aren't that many carbs in a decent amount of them. So we're pro berries for fat loss. Berries, magic fat loss food. Oh, fat burning foods. Apple, I got this big box of Truvia, an artificial sweetener that I put in my coffee. Coffee, it's an appetite suppressant, gives you energy. I have some things on my list of 20 that I didn't buy. Chicken breast. Straight protein. Uh, I get my chicken breast from Chipotle like in my burrito, in my burrito bowl. So um, I'll be having that later today. I didn't buy chicken breast to prepare. I don't like preparing it and I don't like the taste of it when I do prepare it. it takes a while to prepare. Actually, I made a video on are meal prep companies worth it and uh, kind of broke down how long it takes to cook food versus how much it would cost to get it delivered. So you can watch that video if you're into that kind of subject matter. Watermelon, some of you are gonna hate me. I think watermelon's overrated. I know, just like, like you already made the thumbs up blue, now you gotta make the thumbs down blue, but I just, if I'm in Minnesota with my family and we're grilling and there's corn on the cob and there's burgers and there's watermelon, it's amazing. But if it's like this not even that red, like it's kind of white and like grimy watermelon from 
Cristetti's or Morton Williams or like looks like it's been sitting there for days and just it's really haggard and ugh. No, just like. That being said, watermelon is very low calorie, takes up a lot of room in your stomach, so it's a solid keep you full fat loss fruit. Salmon, sashimi, and sushi. I just didn't want to buy grocery store sushi and uh, didn't look super appetizing, but um, cooked salmon is great. It's got essential fatty acids, omega-3 fatty acids that help us live forever. Sashimi is straight protein with some fats depending on the type of fish you get. So a leaner cut of fish is going to be almost exclusively protein. A fattier cut of fish is going to be protein plus fat, but no carbs, right? Sashimi is is raw fish, just pieces of raw fish. And then sushi or nigiri. Um, I never know if it's a hard G or a soft G, but I err on the side of soft G because like if you go hard G, then you're like drop the n-bomb kind of so it's like it's 50 50 i'm gonna not say the n-word uh we're just gonna run that too <laughs> carb plus protein plus maybe some fat depending on the type of fish salmon a little bit of fat i wrote a very comprehensive article on sushi macros i'll link that up i hope i remember to link all these up Sidebar, sushi is amazing because it's so trendy most trendy foods are not conducive to fat loss but you can go out with your friends, you can go out with girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, you can go out to a nice Friday night, Saturday night dinner and stay on track with what you're doing eating sushi. So I'm a fan of sushi, macros are on point, um, yeah. Okay, last two, protein powder, no free brand deals. Find a protein powder that tastes good, um, artificial sweetener, like I discussed earlier, is something I pay attention to with protein powder. Again, it's a matter of, can I get a protein sweetened with stevia? If I can, great, I'm gonna do that. Um, and, and that's what I have. And then macros. If your protein powder is 20 protein, 28 carbs, seven fat, it's like, that doesn't really make sense. The point of protein powder is to get straight protein to save carbs and fats for the rest of your day um, because like I mentioned earlier, getting protein while being in a deficit can be difficult. This is a whey protein powder. I also have a vegan protein powder, which is a combination of pea and brown rice protein. It's Legion Athletics. In a previous video, I said that their vegan protein powder was not tasty. I stand by my opinion. However, it's growing on me. It's an acquired taste. What I do is when I make my, my smoothie, I use about two thirds of a scoop of whey, one half of a scoop of vegan protein. This is chocolate peanut butter, this is milk chocolate, and then banana, cashew milk, ice, and, uh, and it tastes pretty good. So this straight with water, not great, but for those of you who are straight up plant-based, to my plant-based homies, vegan protein powder. That's it, 20 foods for fat loss, Maybe we'll even title it spammier than that. 20 foods to get abs, 20 super f foods. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw. This setup and this presentation and this, the, the level of fun I had with this video makes me hopeful for a return of equals and alternatives. See you tomorrow. By the way, I haven't fully fleshed this out. So I probably shouldn't say it, but I'm gonna share it anyway. I'm not gonna share it. I'm gonna share it anyway. Is it better to have never lived than to live for the sole purpose of being fed to humans? Is my question. Because if, if hypothetically, I can, <laughs> this is not a vegan YouTube channel and uh, I'm not vegan, but I just find myself in so many, conversations, not even debates, conversations with vegan people that I want to I wanna just run this by you team. If the entire world went vegan, the animal population would drastically come down. So the majority of animals that would live, cows, I mean, you know what I'm talking about, not all animals, but cows, pigs, chickens, that would live wouldn't ever be born. And so my question for you is, would it not be better to live a life even if 
your life is a means to an end to feed humans than to have never lived, assuming those animals are treated properly. Like factory farming is obviously awful, but if those animals are treated properly and humanely and live good lives and aren't in the conditions that many animals live in, isn't it better to have lived than to have never lived? Let me know, let me know what you think, comment. Back to the video.